joined by Brett Tavo, author of Unpacking Greatness, a Chiefs book you can check out on Amazon. Brett, this week we're going to check out the two-point conversion play. It ended up being pretty important in this game because the Chiefs went to overtime, so they needed all the points. But another example of Andy Reid being creative in the shovel game and also Travis Kelsey getting a lot of attention. So we're going to go ahead and break this one down. Yeah, so, I mean, this, as you said, this is a, just a, a staple of, of their short yardage using high leverage situations. Um, I, I looked back in, in the book, and, and they ran it four times on third down last year, third and short situations. And they, they obviously, as you said, they needed it um, badly in this situation. So they probably had it in the, in the uh, arsenal ready to go. They did. And so let's take a check, take a look and see how they were able to execute this. And uh, to start off with, the power shovel is what we'll call this one. And we'll see why here in a second. But uh, first thing we see is the two by two and Mel Kelsey coming in motion. Yeah. So uh, the, the power shovel, just the, the name of it is because it, and we'll, we'll uh, see when we get to the end zone. It, it's blocked just like a power scheme. Uh, gap blocks with the backside guard uh, wrapping or pulling and then they're wrapping to the second level. But um, in this, in, in the shovel, uh, in power shovel, you don't have a kick out block like you do in a regular power scheme. You have to have a way using flow, uh, a fake, whatever, to deal with that in man on the line of scrimmage, which we'll see with the boot action to widen him. And that actually serves as the kick out and the guard wraps up. So uh, yeah, two by two formation, uh, you know, they use this later in the game, the same formation to pick up a huge third and one, I think, in overtime, Jesse, as you and I were talking about. Uh, but but Kelsey coming across, he's just going to take all kinds of eyes with him just because of who he is. And um, usually when the, when the Chiefs have run shovel in the past, looking back at all four, the shovel player has been on the opposite side of where the shovel is going. He comes across the formation, across the ball. Here, I, I think in order to hide um, – and, and give a different wrinkle, hide the tendency. They line McKinnon up on the same side. And as you have noted there, they mess to give it a, an, an inside zone look, so to speak. Yeah, that's a really good detail that you brought up, Brad, because again, we just see these shovel plays working, but it's these tiny things, these tiny tendency breakers uh, that make them effective because all of a sudden the defense can't pick up that tell and know exactly what's coming. So this meshing, even from a different position, from a different running back, as you noted, uh, it's something that does maybe not tip the tendency of the play as it might in the past. Absolutely. So they mesh with the inside zone here and, and, um, as you can see, uh, McKinnon, after a couple steps, now becomes the shovel player, um, which is a, a different way. You know, looking back, they, they had not shoveled this to the tailback. It had always been a, a, usually Kelsey. There was one to Michael Burton, uh, but never never to the tailback. And we see Kelsey in the flat. You'll see uh, this guy on the hash here, this defender. He's the one that uh, Mahomes has to deal with because he's unblocked. We'll see this a little bit later in the end zone view better. But uh, when these two guys are running in these different ways, this allows this thing to open up. Yeah, so he, uh, Mahomes is going to, you know, boot off of that inside zone fake. And, of course, that that end man is the, is the boot player. So he naturally widens in order to play the quarterback, and, and that just gives just enough um, of, a, of an opportunity to get that to McKinnon. And so we'll see this play out for the rest of the play. McKinnon gets it gets to the end zone. Uh, I actually asked Patrick Mahomes that the Chiefs media coverage was bumped up a, a day this week because of uh, the Saturday. So I asked Patrick Mahomes about this play. So let's listen to him and hear what he had to say about this one. What's interesting is you saw him throw it overhand. That actually probably wasn't the original intention on this play. So let's check out Pat and see what he had to say. Well, it kind of gives me an option to do two different things. Obviously, it gives me an option to scramble out. I and mean, we had Travis kind of on that little route, but he took so many people with him. Um, and I, I saw that defense end just get enough uh, upfield, and I wasn't enough room for me to do the underhand shovel, so I just had to find a way to get it to Jarek, and uh, he able to was able to make a tough catch in traffic and get in the end zone. So there you have it. If we go back to uh, this one on the stream, uh, again, this this could have been an underhand pass to Mahomes, but uh, that defensive end he's reading, he did tell us that uh, you were wondering about this, whether it is a mm -hmm. two option for Mahomes, and he does have the option to throw it to Kelsey if that – a defensive end or another linebacker bites, or I'm sorry, if the defensive end bites inside, but uh, instead he's able to get it right by uh, the defensive end to McKinnon. And he does have a couple options on this play. Yeah. So to, I mean, technically uh, I mean, this is just a, it's a former triple option, you know, um, in, instead of the old dive pitch that you have in, in, a, in, you know, the old triple option, you've got basically the shovel. And then and as you um, 
asked him about the sprint out flat routes. It, look, it looks like, you know, um, MVS and, and uh, Smith Schuster were, were basically their job was to just create traffic for Kelsey, but it's possible it just creates a scramble drill. I think as as Pat said, let's get to the end zone view of this. Uh, mm-hmm. and talk a little bit about the blocking too, because this is what's fascinating. This gets into the X's and O's and it also talks about how well this play worked that they had a lot of blockers and then they had some blockers who didn't have anything to do at the end of the play. Yeah. So, I mean, this is just, if you could pause it there, Jesse, this is just a, a such a favorable look for this power scheme. Uh, you've got a, a two eye, you've got a really open B gap right there. This bubble as we see, uh, as we'll see 58 is really going to take the bait with Kelsey coming across the formation. Yeah, so, so what you end quick, up real quick, the B gap is yeah. basically where 58 standing right now. Yeah. He's, yeah, in between uh, the tackle and the guard there. Uh, so the flow is really, as we'll see, is going to take care of him. And you have five blockers with excellent angles. Um, you know, uh, Smith's going to down block. Uh, uh, Wiley's going to down block. And they're basically going to, you know, be able to get a true double team on this guy here. Humphrey's going to block back or choke uh, this this three technique on the outside eye of Tooney. Uh, and it's an easy block for Brown. He's going to um, what, what you call hinge on the backside. You, you just got great angles and great numbers and the flow even adds to that even more. And you mentioned this earlier. This is what I didn't understand about football before talking to some coaches is I was thought power run is like, oh, power run. But no power run is this guard looping around and everybody mm-hmm. else that you're talking about down blocking, as you see on our screen, blocking to their right. So they get better angles and then that looper is able to get a better angle around the corner. So we'll watch this play out. And, and to me, Trey Smith here, he kind of manhandles 91. Uh, you talk about uh, Creed Humphrey. He's kind of manhandling 98. You see even Andrew Wiley can kind of come and help and double team here. But uh, this inside linebacker is really important too, because Kelsey really creates a lot of attention. If we go back to the very beginning, even the safety here, when, Kelsey goes in motion. You see him at the bottom. He kind of points and says, hey, uh, Kelsey's coming this way. So Kelsey bringing about so much. Everybody knows Kelsey. Here, here's the point. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Uh, that's going to be a big part of this play because all of a sudden, when he breaks to the outside, that opens up a huge hole. So, yeah, I mean, um, Mahomes blocks a guy with his, you know, his boot action. That serves as the kickout block as in the power scheme. And then Tooney doesn't have anybody to rap for because, as you said, Kelsey – you know, pulls that that place side linebacker way out of the box. And and that's, you know, this is such a great play because it, it it's such a – it's still a power, downhill, aggressive play with the gap blocks and the guard wrapping. But the horizontal flow and the horizontal presentation just makes it even that much more difficult to defend because naturally, you know, they're looking to play – that horizontal game, Kelsey coming across, Mahomes booting out, and then they've got, you know, a gap scheme coming right at them. It puts them, you know, puts the defense really in a bind. Real quick, too, yeah. Well, let's watch Wiley here. I love watching the right tackler because he even has to find work. He's even kind of like trying to find somebody to block here. I mean, this thing is blocked so well that you basically have two linemen who are trying to find work, whether it's yeah. in the end zone or helping a teammate out. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, you know, it's <laughs> it's definitely a good problem to have. Yeah. Well, again, um, the X's and O's, the breakdown, the details of this, um, impressive from the blocking side, impressive execution, impressive using Kelsey as a decoy of sorts again. But again, they could have thrown it to him. We go back to a lot of this is Mahomes. You're able to have him with his arm strength, with all he can do, but his mental capability to turn this into a triple option. You're really relying on your quarterback. They rely on Mahomes here. He makes the right decision. He even changes his arm angle, throws it overhand, gets it to Kent McKinnon, and this ends up as a successful play. A lot of great things come together for the Chiefs in this play, a very important play for them. And, uh, again, Andy Reid showing some X's and O's wizardry. Yeah, it, it'll you know be interesting. I, I'm sure we're going to see you know some sort of wrinkle off in this in the weeks to come or, or some other way to uh, what you call wind address this base scheme that that obviously they're they're good at you know that this this power scheme they run it in in different situations with a true power play out of 21 personnel with the fullback kicking out in the guard wrapping and it's also for the play side it's the same thing as the counter scheme Jesse that we've broken down before on here the only difference is you've got a guard kicking out in a tackle or a, a tight end wrapping but it's the same base scheme a gap scheme where the front side of the play is is gap blocking and then who is pulling um, and what they're pulling for changes. So you're able to have maximum carryover with a base scheme and do different things out of it. 
That's going to wrap it up for the details this week. Uh, thanks for joining me, Brett. And thanks to all you out there for checking out the details. Be sure to tune in for another episode next week.